Well, good afternoon and good evening. Thank you all for, for being here. Special thanks once again to Gary and Karen and Juan and supporting cast. Let's thank them for their leadership getting us all here today. I also want to acknowledge um, my partner in organizing activism and pursuing dreams, uh, my wife Dana Kent. <laughs> Dana and I are one example of unions that happen in unions. <laughs> we met working with the United Farm Workers Union in the mid-1970s. Dana was an organizer, I had just finished law school, and I pursued my dream of being a union lawyer with the UFW. There could be no higher calling in life. That dream lasted for about two years, and Caesar fired all of us, but that's another story. Um, we remained good friends, and uh, that union built on a history of immigrant labor in the Salinas Valley, in California, Bokis, Arkies, Chinese, Japanese, Filipinos, Mexicans, um, and the list goes on now to indigenous immigrants from Oaxaca and other parts of the world. The number one employer in Monterey County is agriculture. Number two is hospitality tourism. And number three is higher education. The first two the backbone is immigrant workers. And a lot of us, when you look around this room, our shared organizing histories are connected to that history of working people, immigrant communities. And yet, the tentacles that reach out from that core, at least for Dana and me, go into every sector of our communities. And as I looked at the list of interviewees and and as I looked around this room, and I'll leave out some sector, but there is a commonality, but from the labor movement, the United Farm Workers Union history, California Rural Legal Assistance, elections and striving for enforcement of the Voting Rights Act, education and migrant education, health care, the environment, public health, and the nexus between public health and the environment. Too often we create false silos in our communities of the environmental community and the social justice and public health community. Every environmental fight is first and foremost about public health and it's underserved communities that are often the first in the front lines of victims of pollution, contamination, pesticide poisoning. Uh, I first met Gary over 40 years ago. I was with the UFW. We used to, at night, sneak into CRLA to use their photocopy machine, where Juan was a community organizer. Then when I left UFW and was working at CRLA, then I was opening the door for Gary to come in and use the photocopy machine. <laughs> that photocopy machine got more use from people doing good work in the Salinas Valley than I think any other photocopy machine. <laughs> My list goes on. The civil rights struggle, the work of the ACLU, the work of the Civil Rights Coalition of Monterey County, the work of the NAACP and LULAC, focusing on police misconduct, on equality and fairness in our justice system, the LGBT community, the peace and justice community. And again, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, I remember meeting Rosemary Matson who Gary and Karen met with before she passed away. And Rosemary was a pillar of this Unitarian Church, and her husband, who passed in, I think, the early 90s, mid-90s, Howard Matson, who was a Unitarian minister, they provided sanctuary for Cesar Chavez during the 1970 lettuce strike. We hear about the lettuce curtain that divides the Salinas Valley and the peninsula, and yet that sanctuary house for Caesar was on this side of the lettuce curtain. And it provided sanctuary. Uh, and when you look at people who provide sanctuary, there's no geographic border because it's a state of mind. And Howard and Rosemary provided that sanctuary for Caesar when he was facing death threats and before he was arrested and jailed in the 1970 
let us strike. Rosemary, I had the honor when Daniel was first an LVN organizer, LVN, RN, labor organizer, then medical student at Harvard. I had the honor of working with international physicians for prevention of nuclear war. It was a four-year gap in our history of living in Monterey County. And it was during that tenure that Rosemary and Howard came with us the first international delegation to Kazakhstan in the former Soviet Union and a people's movement of nomadic Kazakhs who had gone on strike in the mines to get then President Gorbachev to stop nuclear weapons testing. And they named their movement the Nevada semi palatinsk Movement. And with us were 300 internationals from 30 countries, including Rosemary and Howard, and including Native American downwinders from Utah and Nevada who had suffered from radiation exposure. And we flew from um, Almahati to semi palatinsk and rode buses for about five hours from the airport in semi palatinsk across the desert to the middle of this Soviet test site. And that meeting was a downwinders in Kazakhstan meeting downwinders from Nevada and Utah who didn't share a common language, but who shared a common experience of being exposed to the radiation, the death before detonation of nuclear weapons. And there were tears running down the faces of the Native Americans and the Native Kazakhs. And they didn't need a common language because they shared a common experience. Well, that takes us out of Monterey County, but part of that delegation was Rosemary Matson, And Howard was very fragile, and she helped him onto every bus and every airplane. And they were there representing Monterey County wow. and people of the US who had a vision of peace among people in different corners of the planet. So when we come back to this project, this oral history project, and we look at the very diverse struggles that people have engaged in, from education, civil rights, environmental rights, um, and the list that I recited, what is the common thread among all of us? What is the common thread that transits the lettuce curtain? It's a shared commitment to humanity. It's people who are driven by something bigger than ourselves. And it's pursuing the connection that is informed by intellect, but it is driven by heart and by an aspiration of something bigger and better than ourselves as individuals and realizing that when we make that human connection, whatever the movement, it reinforces us as people. It builds us as individuals. We always gain more than we give. Every one of these movements that we've been party to or that we've watched and admired. Uh, when I think of my long-standing friendship with Juan Martinez, where's Juan? Don't they? I mean, we've been on some picket lines together. Um, we've traveled on the road many miles. We attended Caesar's funeral together. We went down for Richard Chavez's funeral. Um, we've shared a lot of stories. A guy that grew up in Gonzales and a guy that grew up in Pasadena, California. The thing that divides us is corporate America and corporate media. And the thing that unites us is not letting that dictate how we identify ourselves. It's being confident in building our human connections with one another. I've gained more in my friendship with Juan Martinez and Gary Carnes and Karen Araujo and most of the people in this room than I've gained from any special report on the TV news. So what we have here tonight is something very special. And yet capturing these histories is critical to informing the next generations. It's critical to taking pride in what we have struggled and suffered and built together. And it's critical to not losing the history. Because if we don't capture it, preserve it, and tell the stories, nobody else will. <clears throat> so again, I just want to thank the co-architects of this effort. Dana and I are fully supportive. 
We appreciate the hours that Gary's put into this and Karen and Juan and, and many others in this room. The least we can do is make sure this effort has the resources necessary to bring these interviews into print to share in all of our schools, not just in Monterey County, but in the many counties that have similar heroes who haven't yet organized an oral history project. Hopefully Monterey County can inspire people in other counties to do what we're doing here tonight. So again, thank you all. Si se puede. We gain more than we give. Thank you so much, and let's thank our organizers.